Hello, replay viewers. If you're seeing this part of the show, you are watching the replay of the live show. I'm gonna kill some time here as I wait for some of the live folks to get on. I'm gonna show you the homestead before we get into the talks about how the salad bar beef by Joel Salatin worked for me. Hey guys, I'm gonna give you guys just a quick tour. I wanna show you something quick on my homestead while we wait for some folks to get in here. Let me flip this camera around. Look guys, the bus. One thing that we've done is we freed up the back tank. We had our mechanic out here yesterday. He's freed up the back tank. Uh, before we were only able to fill up the front tank. That's gonna be a huge game changer. We also have the mechanic here. It's good to be home to have familiar mechanics. He's working on the air filter. Look inside of this motor, guys. We're just gonna kill a little bit of time here until we get into the main show, let some folks get on here. Look, that's where the air filter was. It's huge. It's huge. It's literally like three and a half feet tall. It's absolutely crazy. I want you to see what my chickens did, guys. I wasn't even here. Hey, Wholesome Roots, what's up? Do you see this garden? <laughs> I wasn't even here. That's the magic of, magic of chickens. Do you guys see where we are? There's the house, there's the garden, there's where the cows were. Here's where we built compost piles for them. Here's what you gotta do to make that happen. I'll give you guys a quick bonus before we get into the main content, content here. Okay, the, the pile behind me, it's got squash, corn, uh, tomatoes, peas. We had peas in the salad the other day. I didn't do a thing. I didn't even plant the seed. Chickens will do everything for you. They will till, they will fertilize, they will compost, they will spread mulch, they will spread that compost. What else is there left, guys? They will uh, plant a seed. That's what happened here. You give the chickens a compost pile where you want a garden area. Let the chickens till up that garden area over time. One chicken will take four weeks to till up 50 square feet, not sod. It takes them even shorter time if it's a garden. They will uh, till up this garden area, fertilize it with their manure, give them a compost pile. They will um, fertilize that, and then eventually after, maybe you put the compost pile on a, a, a pallet, four pallets piled up. Don't let the chickens uh, get into it that way, and the compost pile heats up. Let it get good and hot, 130 degrees that first week, and then loosen the pallets and let the chickens spread it out for you, giving them your food scraps, and guess what's gonna happen? You walk away, Move the chickens on to a different job. <laughs> this is what's gonna happen. This is what's gonna happen. You don't even have to plant your seeds. And the next thing you know, you'll walk out and you'll see your chicken, your little red hen, pushing a wheelbarrow, bringing the bringing the tomato, bringing the pumpkins in, and she'll be baking that baking that pumpkin pie. That's all the chickens lack to to for completing the circle. They're, they're not gonna bake the pie. Well, actually they might because if you use eggs in it, they're gonna be a contribution there. So, all right, let's jump into the content. We got a bunch of people here. I wanted to talk about Joel Salatin's Salad Bar Beef, his book. And I, I would say this is, um, this is my beginning. I'm gonna tell you my story of it. It's quite humorous. Gonna be a little bit vulnerable here because it wasn't full of success, okay? And I didn't always know what I know now, but the important thing is that Joel says all the time, just do something even if it's wrong. So the reason I'm triggered to talk about Salad Bar Brief is Joel is doing a talk on that today online in the free summit by Marjorie. I'm gonna leave a link for that free summit. He's on today. There's another talk about kombucha today. You guys, a lot of people want to know what we're going to do when we get home. We're going to grow our own kombucha. That's for sure. We drink it once, twice a day. If we grew our own, we'd probably drink it two or three times a day because it's like $4 a bottle in the store. But at home, you can grow it for probably about 40 cents a bottle. Okay. So I would encourage you, those are the two of the shows I would check out on the summit today. They're available today for free. After that, if you buy the summit for keeps, you'll get to watch it whenever you want, plus the 38 other speakers. So enough about the summit, I'll mention it one more time in the end. And plus, if you do buy it for keeps, I will send you a copy of Permaculture Chickens for free. All you gotta do is email me the receipt. The info on that is in the description. Okay, my experience with salad bar beef. A mentor, we're gonna get to see him in the vlogs. When, when we leave here, we're gonna go through Tennessee, we're gonna go to Knoxville, meet up with him. He's more like a, a spiritual daddy to me, okay? Yes, he farms, and yes, he actually got me in to marketing, market farming by telling me about Joel Salatin. This was years ago, probably 12 years ago, and he gave me a model to raise my own beef to earn money. This was the model. You buy 
and you guys might want to take notes in this and pay attention because it works I tried it you buy a steer a steer is a male cow that has been castrated so they're they're a little calmer they're not they they don't react to a female in heat if you don't know what that means we're gonna to get to that in a second so they're a little bit easier to manage okay so you buy a steer well I'll get to that in a minute so yes buy a steer uh, at the time it was a dollar a pound live and you buy a steer that is one years old that's gonna be about 500 pound steer if we're talking about Angus okay so around here it's easy to get a hold of Angus that's great for raising for meat so at the time it was a dollar but now it's like two dollars so it can vary and where do you buy them you go to Craigslist really okay and I you buy the steer dollar two dollars a pound 500 pounds it weighs it should be about a year old and there's people who just raise them for that raise them to sell them at a year old and they're happy to sell them to you then you're gonna pay a delivery fee you kind of do your math so you're gonna buy it live a 500 to a thousand dollars depending on where you are and then you bring it to some pasture if you see behind me guys do you see behind me this is unreal that's my pasture okay in the spring summer and fall you've got free feed for that cow okay and then what Steve my mentor taught me was get Joel Salatin's book and he's gonna teach you how to move that cow every day so that your pasture will last longer I would say initially as you begin starting out you need two acres per cow to get started okay per steer in this case they're gonna eat more and more as they get older okay but you're gonna be rotationally grazing you're gonna be and it doesn't have to be that hard you see here you see I have a perimeter fence here guys around this I don't know that's probably about three and a half acres I have a nice woven wire perimeter fence that's not all you that that's overkill Joel Salatin I've been to his place has thin locust posts enough that you can drive an alien so two inches thick puts those um, creates a perimeter fence and what I mean by perimeter fence is a fence around your property or in this case around this pasture because there's a road here there's a public road up there so there needs to be a perimeter fence there one strand of electric if you promise to check that electric every day the cool thing about cows as big as they are they take the least amount of fencing of all the livestock you can fence the, I am live here guys and the kids are down with Amy they're playing at the pool mom is uh, on Aaron so I might be interrupted hopefully we can get through this I got to speed up here we got the, um, the cows will you got your perimeter fence one strand of wire just keep it hot keep it hot uh, plug-in electric is just fine if you can do it that way you get more power for your money that way and it doesn't take up that much electricity so don't mess with solar if you don't have to in my opinion you get way more for your money with just plugging it in and even if you lose power for a little bit the cows are mentally trained not to run into that so you got your perimeter fence around and then here all I did was put lanes I put I think two three lanes down this field that were semi-permanent okay they were electric fence with wire and then every day I would go down a lane so I would put up what you call cross fences I would go across with fences and give them what I estimated to be what they needed in a day Joel Salatin talks about it he'll talk about it in his presentation today on the summit he talks about it in his book how do you measure he calls it one cow day how much will one cow eat during a day and you get pretty good at that you get pretty good at moving them he talks about how to get them water I got them water in a, to a trough me from my well he talks about how you can pump water from a creek uh, and then he talks about the minerals you need all he uses is kelp and sea salt guys that's it two minerals I had mine on a mineral sled I put my mineral feeder um, that you can buy that has a lid on it that the cows can lift up uh, it's called the bell ham b-e-l-h-a-m mineral feeder and it has three slots for minerals and uh, it's cool because it doesn't get wet and I uh, the cows can uh, nose up this uh, cover for it and get in there and get their salt which we use cell salt or sea salt you can get all this we liked for trail you can get it from new country organic from for trail just ask mr. Google pants about that and then I put it I screwed it into a pallet and the pallet has two slats underneath it and I use those as sliders and I would just pull it around if you've been with us in a long time for the vlog you'll see those slats and how we would pull out what I call the mineral sled okay I'll take a moment here to tell you guys if you want more of this go sign up for the online summit Joel Salton is talking about this today salad bar beef 
link in the description. You can also get the book if you missed that. And you can also buy the summit if you missed this. I mean, I guess most of you are probably gonna actually see this after, after the live event is over for Joel. So um, you can also get buy it if you missed if you missed the live free event. Okay, link in the description. Anyway. So that was my minerals, my waters, and my moving them every day. So I had this plan. I was gonna buy this cow. I found one online. Do you hear that? I found one, okay? I bought this cow. I went up there to look at it, or I said I was gonna buy it. And I looked at this cow and I said, oh boy. I don't know, but that doesn't look like a steer to me. And mind you, I didn't know much at the time. And it turns out, so I got it, and I wasn't sure, and, and I brought it home, and my mentor happened to be there when I brought this home. And he doesn't live here, he lives in Tennessee, but he happened to be there, and he said, well, you got yourself a heifer. And I panicked, and if you guys don't know, a heifer is a female cow that has not yet had a baby. And I said, well, shoot, I was supposed to get a steer, this was not the plan. And I said, is it gonna be okay? And he said, yeah, it'll be okay. It might not grow quite as fast, but it should, it should be just fine. Don't worry about it. So I got this, uh, so I kind of let that go and I was a little frustrated because I felt like that guy, I was very clear about wanting to steer. Uh, so learn how to sex a cow before you go. What I mean by that, sexing that is being able to tell <laughs> if it's a male, male or a female, okay? So we got that, we got that heifer, we put her out in the field. She was wild as all get out. But we had this perimeter fence so we weren't too worried about it. Actually, I didn't have this perimeter fence at the time. I only had this single strand. So. We had this heifer, we started moving around every day. I got the hang of it after a while, but about every three weeks, that cow would just start bellowing. And I didn't even know that was the name of it. It'd just start moo, moo, and it'd start walking back and forth in its paddock. And every once in a while, it'd get out of its paddock, and that's no big deal, because a paddock is a, a fence system inside of the perimeter fence. So really, I had to get through two fences to get out. And sometimes it would do that. I would, it, I would just go back in and get put, put it back in its paddock, and, and no worries. And after about three days, the cow calmed down. Well, that happened again. In another two or three weeks, that cow started bellowing, and she walked back and forth along this electric fence so much that she wore out a path. Well, the next morning, I woke up, and the cow was gone. There was no bellowing. The cow was gone. And I should tell you this model. I, I should have told you this already, but let me back up here why this was such a big deal that this cow got out because if you do this model i speak to you about you buy this you buy this steer at one years old live you pay for them to deliver it at the beginning of the summer the idea is to sell it in the fall but even better you can go ahead and sell that steer to four families you break it up into quarters and say hey families you want to come in on this and you've done your math you figured out what you're what you're going to have to pay for this cow uh, what's it gonna cost you to butcher it in the end? And that cow should theoretically grow from 500 pounds to 800 to even 1,000 pounds by, by fall, early winter before you butcher it. So it can almost double, if not double. And then you've, you've, so, you've sold, you've gotten half your money from your customers before you even bought the cow. And nothing wrong with that. You let them know with that. They do it all the time. That's like the CSA model. You say to your customers, you guys are in it with me. I have the land. We're going to go in on fours and get this cow. You, you make a profit, actually. You, I'm not saying you got you got to work this for nothing. I was able to actually profit $1,000 per cow every time I did this profit. So you figure it out. Your cow is going to weigh 800 to 1,000 pounds by the end. You're going to lose about 40% of that in the butchering by the time they skin it, gut it, uh, debone uh, the thing. Uh, you're going to get about 60% of the live weight. So there you can have some sort of estimation. So say you're going to have a, you buy a 500 pound cow, you're going to get 800 pounds out of it. So whatever 40% uh, off of that is, that's what you're going to have. And that's what you figure out what you're going to sell it for. I think I sold it for $8 a pound uh, frozen. And that didn't include just hamburger, but that was filet mignon and all that. We, we split it up four ways between the family. And no, one family didn't just get the front quarter, okay? We took the entire cow and then split it up, the meat packages evenly, four ways at the end, and people came and pick it up. It's a beautiful model. You sell, you sell the cow, that way you, you sell it before you even go get it, and that way you have the money to go get it. That way you have money to put up some fences and stuff like that. So when this cow got out, I was in big trouble because I had already gotten this money. I felt even though they were in it with me and took on the risk, it, um, 
it still, I, I felt a lot worse than if I had just done it by myself. But I'm going to give you some tips here so that that doesn't happen to you. Uh, tip number one, well, let me tell you what happened. We went and looked for that. We went and looked for that cow. We looked. We went down the road to the other cows. We went up to the neighbor's property. We looked. I'm telling you, for one week, I gave up. I finally gave up. I didn't call anybody yet because I guess I still had a glare of hope. And at that point, I was just going to give people their money back and take the hit. Well, I um, I gave up for two days, and all of a sudden, I woke up. And I said, beauty, I gotta go. And I couldn't even talk to her. I was like so focused. I said, I just gotta go. I had this hunch and I got on my four wheeler and I drove to the neighbor's property. You guys seen it, that beautiful lake. And I drove up these trails and I had a friend with me and he said, I was probably three miles in there. I'd never gone that far looking for this cow so far. I had never imagined. And I, my friend had to go pee. We were about to turn around. When he got off and pee, he said, there's some tracks. And we followed those tracks, and sure enough, we came into a herd of about 25 Angus. And there we thought was my cow. I cannot tell you how absolutely happy and thrilled I was. Well, I went home, tried to figure out how to call these people, figured out how to call them. Sure enough, they had, had an extra cow. Could I come get it? Do you have a trailer? <laughs> trailer. They had a trailer. They actually had they actually had a farmer coming to take some cows to the market. So this guy graciously agreed just to drop. Uh, what do we call her? We called her A1. Drop A1 off at the time. See, we don't want to get too attached, right? You, you don't want to get too attached to your meat animals. So A1, T-Bone, those kinds of names, those are more fitting, right? So we, we went and picked up A1, but I learned my lesson. One, besides getting a heifer, which wasn't the end of the world, and it could have been okay. Two, I should have gotten two cows. That's a big lesson. You know what was happening to that cow? She was going in heat. If you, don't know that, if you don't know what that means, every three weeks, the heifer goes into a heat. And that means she wants her a male, okay? And if she doesn't have a male, or even another female, another female, she'll wrestle, she'll actually, for lack of a better word, dry hump, and she'll be okay. And others will mount her. It's weird, even if they're females, or it doesn't matter, okay? Come on, we're talking farming here. It's just the truth, all right? I'm just gonna be straight with you. They have to have at least one other to get some of that fresh. And plus, they're herd animals. They don't like to be alone. I don't think I had any of this problem. In fact, I said, I learned my lesson, and I bought three other, <laughs> three, three other cows from her, from that guy, and uh, sold them all uh, to other families because I had no problem selling that one. And so brought them home. I had four. That was like midsummer. Raised them through the... Um, raised them through the up into the fall early winter to the grass stopped growing till they ate all the grass hired a hand to come out and this is another tip I'll give you and then I'll wrap up the show but uh, so for keeping the cow in getting them a mate and you're not gonna have that much problem always making sure your fence is super hot and you're really gonna be just fine and of course if you're feeding them enough so let's assume you're feeding them and watering them enough you're gonna be just fine follow Joel, Joel's principles Try to move, move, no, don't try. Move them every day. Holidays, Sabbath day, Sunday, whatever. Move them. If you absolutely have to take a day off, give them two days worth of a paddock. And I will say we have we did that many times. I think we did it almost every time. Once a week, we'd give them two. It's not going to be the end of the world. Go on a vacation. Go for four days. Give them four days of, of paddock. But make sure that fence is hot. Okay? So, sold all those cows had a great time learned a lot from Salatin did it two three years after that didn't have didn't have those same problems got a steer whatever then I applied this to my family cow when we when we stopped raising a beef for for market we applied the principles in this for the family cow I think it's absolutely priceless because you can quadrupled the value and the productivity of your land just doing this for a number of years and what I say is what we what if anything you can learn from this guys is just do something even if it's wrong this problem all worked out in the end <laughs> I bought it I didn't even know how to tell if it was a male or female cow I did it okay I didn't know 
I knew I should keep my fence hot, but how exactly? Well, it just takes practice. You just gotta go out there and do it. Uh, and then you just get the hang of it. And then it's like this automatic, easy thing. It's frustrating and hard in the beginning. And all these principles apply, whether you're raising cows or sheep or chickens or gardening. You just gotta go for it, okay? And then something's gonna happen where if you don't follow the books, and, and because of negligence or you didn't understand, look, that might happen. You see that garden that grew all by itself? Actually, I left for Australia to go take my PDC and I took my chickens out of their run. They were in a compost on steroid run. I moved them out to free range so that beauty wouldn't have to do much with them but shut them up and put them up. She didn't have to feed them, water them. They had access to the creek. They free range. Look at all the seed heads out there. The seed heads, the bugs, the grass. Guys, you can feed six chickens on a half an acre and feed them absolutely nothing. It's only been the last hundred years we've had grains, y'all. So I left to Australia and came back and plants were growing everywhere. So just do something. My kids break the planting rules all the time. One time we were planting in the garden, they said, let me plant this portion. I let them. They plant everything way too close. But guess what? Guess whose plot did better? I'm not lying to you. The kids' plots did better. Other plants grew up. They, they, pl the, the plants beat out the weeds because of how condensed they were. I'm going to have to go soon. Mr. Brown is coming in a need. Check out the summit. Uh, link in the description. Joel Salatin today. We will talk to you later.